Hello everybody, I hope you are doing very good. In this video, I'm going to show you how to specify a bivariate regression model and estimate it using the Satora Bensler Robust Estimator in EQF. So this is our model. As you can see, we have one predictor factor, which is job performance with six indicators and one outcome factor, which is job satisfaction with five indicators. Now let's go to EQS to specify this model. Okay, first let me open my data file. All right, so this is my data file. In order to specify the model, I'm going to click on this button, new model helper, and then I will select this option. All right, now I have to define my first and second factor. So my first factor or F1 is job performance. I just scroll down these are the six items for job performance and my second factor is job satisfaction and these are the five items for job satisfaction okay then I need to click on next and here I have to define my predictor and my outcome so the first factor is the predictor factor and the second factor or job satisfaction is the outcome factor and now when I click on next the model is built so this is the model that we're going to estimate all right let me save this model as model one okay now I need to click on build EQS and then select title specifications I'm going to ask EQS to print the robust statistics in my output as well so this is my eqx file you can see that i have 75 variables and 2000 cases in my data file the method of analysis is here ml and robust and also the analysis is based on covariance and the data comes in raw format so this is the address of the data file in my computer you can see the name and the label of the 75 variables in my data file also the equations are displayed here these are the equations that define my bivariate regression model you can also see the variances of the exogenous factors and uh, the uh, residuals so these are the variances of the residual terms and this is the variance of the only disturbance term in my model note that there are no covariances in my model that's why nothing is displayed below the covariances section. I don't like the equation format for the tables in my output. That's why I'm going to change it to compact. So I just select compact. And now you can see that it has changed to compact. Now I'm going to save this model as model 1. All right. And now it's time to run the model. So in order to do so, what I need to do is to click on run EQS. All right, now the model is run and I can simply go to my EDS file to see the parameter estimates on the model. So let's go to view and then from the estimates, I just select parameter estimates. These are the unstandardized parameter estimates. So you can see all of the variances have been estimated. The variance of the disturbance uh, has also been estimated. You can see the variance of this exogenous factor and all of the uh, pass coefficients have also been estimated. So these are the factor loading syntax and this is the only uh, pass coefficient between factor 1 and factor 2. If you would like to see the standardized estimates, you can simply select this option and now you can see all of the standardized factor loadings and the standardized pass coefficient between factor 1 and factor 2. All right, now let's go back to our output. I'm going to explore this output file for you. Let me scroll down. Here you can see the univariate statistics. So these are all of the means, skewness, kurtosis, and standard deviations of these items in my model. So you can see the univariate statistics here. We also have multivariate kurtosis statistic, but remember I told you the important statistic here is the normalized estimate of multivariate kurtosis. And when this value is above 5, it means that our data are multivariate and normal. 
So it is obvious that our data in this particular application is multivariate, not normal. And here you can see the top five cases with largest contribution to normalized multivariate cortosis. So these are the case number of these five cases. And you can see their associated estimates. If you compare these values, you can see that this one is considerably larger than the others, which means that this case is uh, an extreme multivariate outlier in our data file. So before interpreting the results, allow me to show you how we can exclude this case from our data file. So let me just close this output file. I just go to my EQX file. Here I just need to go to title specification section. And from this dialect box, I am going to select delete cases. Now, if you remember, the, num the case number for our multivariate outlier was 1528. So I'm going to select this case. Okay. And now you can see that this case has been excluded from my data file when the mother is one. Now let me save this mother file again and I'm going to run the model. Okay, so you can see that excluding this multivariate outlier has reduced the normalized estimate of multivariate cortosis from 85 to 81. So still our data are multivariate and normal. And we are going to resort to the robust statistics when it comes to interpreting their results. Also note that all of these estimates are quite comparable, which means that we really don't have any uh, extreme outlier in our data file. So this is the covariance matrix to be analyzed. And let me just scroll down a little bit. Okay. You can see that we have that uh, important statement in our output file. Parameter estimates appear in order. No special problems were encountered during optimization, which means that our results can be trusted. You can also see the residual covariance metrics here, as well as its standardized version. You can also see the uh, goodness of fit indices here based on maximum likelihood method. But remember, since our data are multivariate and normal, we are going to ignore all of these uh, statistics here. And we just focus on the robust goodness of fit statistics in this section. So our satora Benzler scale chi-square is 369.84 and the degrees of freedom is 43. Note that our CFI is 0.931 our RMSE is 0.062 and the 95% confidence interval of our RMSE is 0.056 to 0.067 so these are all of the feed indices that you can simply report in your um, article or in your thesis you can also see that convergence occurred in this analysis in six iterations and here you can see the factor loadings and the, the only pass coefficient in this particular bivariate regression model. So the first item for job performance was the scaling item. That's why this uh, pass coefficient has not been estimated, but its standardized version is 0.38. The second item, performance 2, this is the parameter estimate, the unstandardized. Uh, factor loading and you can see the standardized factor loading which is actually very low you can see the unstandardized and the standardized factor loading for performance 3 for performance 4 and for performance 5 so these are the five items for job performance and also performance 6 so this is the unstandardized pass coefficient and also the standardized pass coefficient or factor loading Regarding job satisfaction, we have the same situation. The first item for job satisfaction, it was the scaling item. That's why it has not been estimated, but its standardized version is 0.662. So we can, you can see the 
factor the unstandardized item, the standardized factor loadings for the rest of the items of job satisfaction. And here you can see the pass coefficient between factor one, which is job performance, and factor two, which is job satisfaction. So the unstandardized pass coefficient is 0 0.538 which means that one unit of change in job performance is associated with 0 0.538 unit of change in job satisfaction. And this is the standardized pass coefficient between factor 1, which is job performance, and factor 2, which is job satisfaction. So, because our data are multivariate and normal, we have to consider the robust standard errors and Z statistics and ignore these traditional uh, standard error and Z statistics here under these two um, under these two columns so you can see that all of the pass coefficients that have been estimated are statistically significant you can also see the R square values for the items as well as the R square value for the endogenous factor in our model which is job satisfaction so in fact, based on this analysis, um, job performance only explains 8% of job satisfaction. Then in the next section, you can see the variances. So this is the variance of our only factor, exogenous factor in our model, which is job performance. So this is the variance and this is the st robust standard error and Z statistic. You can see that it is statistically significant. Also, you can see the residual variances and the robust standard errors and the Z statistics. So, all of these residual variances are statistically significant. And the only disturbance variance, which is D2, is also statistically significant. And then we have the standardized solution here. So, all of the standardized factor loadings are displayed here. And this is also the standardized pass coefficient between factor 1 and factor 2. And you can see the R square values here. Alright, now if you look at this table, look at this information, you can see that the standardized factor loading for performance 1 and also for performance 2 are basically very low. So now I'm going to show you how you can simply delete these two items from the model. There are a few approaches and now I'm going to show you just one of them. Alright, now let me close this output file and also this EQX file. Alright, I'm going to delete these two items using the EDS or the diagram file. And in order to do so, what I need to do is to right click on this uh, model and uh, then select ungroup from this uh, grouping option. All right, now I'm going to select performance one. I hit delete for performance two. I also delete this item. But remember, performance one was our scaling item, and now there is no scaling item here. So, in order to change performance three to a scaling item, what I'm going to do is to double click on this arrow and then fix it to one. Now you can see that performance three serves as a a scaling fact a scaling item in this model all right let me save this as model 2 all right and now let me select the robust method remember we had one multivariate outlier which is the case with the number of uh, 1528 so this is our multivariate outlier Okay, now you can see, see that we have excluded the multivariate outlier from our analysis and we don't have uh, performance one and performance two in this model anymore. So let me just save this as model two and run it. Okay, let me just scroll down. You could see that our normalized estimate of multivariate kurtosis reduced from 81 to 79. Also, we don't have any extreme outlier here in this uh, data file. 
Let me go to the feet indices. In fact, we have to go to the robust feet indices because our data are multivariate and normal. So you could see that our Satora Benchler scale chi square is 194.25 and the degrees of freedom is 26. And our CFI is 0 0.96 and our RMSE is 0 0.057. You can see the confidence interval and the rest of feet indices here. All right. I forgot to change the uh, format of the output from equations to compact. So this is the equation format, in fact, in our data, in our output. Let me just scroll down to the standardized solution. Now you can see all of these standardized factor loadings and all of them are actually acceptable and very good. Here also you can see the standardized path coefficient between factor 1 and factor 2. And now based on this final model, you can see that 6.8% of job satisfaction is explained by job performance. Okay, it was all I wanted to share with you. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can estimate the same model using the robust PLSE2 estimator. I hope you like this video and thanks for watching.